Welcome back to another episode of Epic Knowledge. Today I'm going to kick it off. I'm going to do a review on a long range Wi Fi adapter. Uh, it's kind of cheap, but I'll go over that in a minute. And the rest of it is going to be how to use Reaver in Backtrack 5. Now I will have a link in the description to a torrent that you can download the ISO from. Uh, I can't really find it on the web anymore, it's not on the website, they kind of moved over to Kali Linux, but uh, everything I'm doing in this video should be completely usable on Kali Linux. So real quick, I'm going to go over this thing, uh, kind of bigger than I thought. Uh, when I saw the picture on Amazon, I thought it was going to be like smaller than this, but definitely can't pack this in my laptop case, uh, but it claims to be 48 uh, decibel DVI whatever that is um, it's pretty good though it's pretty long range I definitely get some uh, noticeable better signal uh, to my neighbors Wi-Fi there I got full bars and they're uh, like a football field away from me stuff like that so um, you know so just kinda aim it where you want it to go I'll have a link down below uh, where you can buy this it's like 25 bucks so Anyways, uh, oh, and I want to show the box. Uh, it's kind of a of a goofy deal. It has a picture of Optimus Prime on it, so you know, <laughs> it doesn't transform. Uh, anyways, so this video is going to be about using Backtrack Five, uh, using Reaver, a Wi-Fi tool. Uh, it's real easy. Uh, it's a little more descriptive than uh, Cali or Wi-Fi. Uh, so you can also I'm gonna use it through VMware but uh, you can put it on a USB and boot your computer up with it remember though if you're gonna have something like this plugged in you like a laptop you're gonna have two wireless LAN devices so make sure you pick the right one uh, when I go through the setup here so without further ado okay so I'm gonna start out by showing how I set up my VMware workstation uh, as you can see I give it half of my computer roughly uh, and as you can see here I disable I completely remove the bridged network adapter I prefer to use a plug-in uh, Wi-Fi dongle so I currently actually never installed it so when I open it up I will uh, uh, start with the live version so as you can see I gave it half my computer uh, half my processors and half my uh, RAM so we're just going to go ahead and power it on. Now in the beginning it will show a boot screen. Just hit enter and I'll get you past that. And I'm going to go down to backtrack forensics and uh, instead of installing. I could install it but just haven't done it. So, uh, And keep in mind you can do all this on a USB as well. So if you want to use the universal USB installer and load it that way it will do the same stuff so to get into backtrack 5 uh, at this point you would have to type in start X they'll bring up the user interface and uh, I really like VMware it seems to work really well now I am using that Wi-Fi adapter uh, from earlier I do have it plugged in so uh, you'll see at the bottom right of that screen right there I do have the uh, adapter uh, ready to go so uh, so as you can see the Raylink it is a Raylink chipset and uh, if yours isn't connected uh, in VMware you can go up here to removable devices and make sure it gets checked so mine loads by default so we're just gonna check and make sure everything's there so we're gonna type in IF config and as you can see we have a wireless LAN 0 And next, we're going to go ahead and put it into monitor mode. We're going to dive right into this reaver. So, airmon ng start wireless LAN 0. And it will load it up. It'll say monitor mode enabled on mon 0. So, we're going to check, make sure mon 0 is there. So, as you can see, under IF config, we do have mon 0. So, Next, we're going to go ahead and uh, start scanning around us. So we're going to do arrow dump dash ng on mon zero. And what this does is it uh, dumps out all the 
different devices around us. It gives us all the MAC addresses and uh, all the Wi-Fi adapters and everything. It's kind of being a little slow for me. Uh, normally it would be scanning, but I think it all has to do with this particular Wi-Fi adapter. It all has to do with the direction it's aimed. And uh, so it's, you know, I had it kind of aimed in an awkward way just then, so I am kind of adjusting it at this point. And it does kind of reveal some more stuff. So there we go. So there we go. Uh, normally you can just let it scan for a long time, but uh, at this point I'm just going to kind of cut it short. Control C, like the copy command in Windows. And we're going to, as obviously to the right, there's Iceman. We're going to copy the uh, BSS ID. So next we're going to dive right off into Reaver. Um, so it'd be Reaver dash I with, for interface on Mon Zero dash B for BSS ID, and we're going to paste that uh, BSS ID, and then we're going to do dash VV. And at this point, it will wait for a beacon. Here, I'm actually fiddling with it right now, uh, trying to get the dang thing to kind of speed up. Uh, I think, it, like I said, it all has to do with the direction it's aimed and any interference it receives. So. Another note, I don't like using bridged adapters in uh, VMware. It's just not my thing. I feel like it's it needs to be a completely separate computer, so I use a uh, Wi-Fi adapter every time. And here shortly, <laughs> there we go, it switched to channel 1. Now, uh, I wanted to go over how it does the pins. I, in my last video, I did specify that there's 99,999,999 possibilities, which in fact that is true. But actually, the way this works is it cracks uh, two sets of 10,000 or 9,999. So in this case, it's going to crack the first four digits. And uh, after it gets that right, the router will then send it a uh, message saying it was correct. And then it's going to go after the last four digits. So as you can see here, as the digits fly up past us, um, the first four keep changing, the last four stay the same. Uh, so it's going to do two sets of that. So it kind of goes a little faster. Um, even though it gives you that small percentage, it actually is quite quick. Uh, I was able to do this in two hours and 30 minutes. And uh, I like Reaver too because it kind of lets you know what's going on, whether it had a failed transaction or and, and then it's actively... Oh, and if you want to stop it, it will save your session. So you can hit Control c to stop it. Hit up on the deep or on the number pad or arrow key. Hit the up arrow and uh, hit enter again and hit Y for yes, and it will just continue on. So it, it will run through the 20,000 possibilities or 19,998 possibilities. So it's actually very quick. After it gets the first four, usually it gets it at like you know 10, 12 percent. So it's very much quicker. I like it a little better than Wi-Fi. Kind of lets you know what's going on. Uh, if you're having some issues getting a good connection, you can kind of adjust. Um, but like I said, this is all using that Wi-Fi adapter, so it's working out real well. Uh, never had much luck using it with Wi-Fi. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna skip ahead to the completed uh, task. So here it is, uh, WPS pin right there. And just under it is the case sensitive password. So indeed works. And uh, of course, the access point below it. Uh, so that's Reaver in a nutshell. It's very easy to use. So anybody's uh, having issues with Wi Fi, I'd definitely say check out Reaver. And if this video helped you, please smash that like button and uh, please subscribe for more. Definitely uh, didn't know my first video was going to take off the way it did. So. I do have plans to release many more educational videos in the future, so thank you for watching.